The college football that we all know and love is gone. And the sport has gone through a change that I'm not sure the NCAA can bounce back from. Notice that I said the NCAA, because this is all their fault. Until there is better leadership from the top, college football will continue to go downhill. It's very simple. The demise of college football has to do with the fact that both the transfer portal and the fact that players were able to receive pay happened roughly at the exact same time. It's like when you mix dark liquor with light liquor. Separate and on their own, they're good. But you mess around and mix them on the same night, it causes for a world full of trouble. So many places to start, but I'll start here. The NCAA simply waited way too long for players to be able to get paid. The NCAA has been around since 1906, and in 2023 they finally allowed for athletes to be paid through this whole NIL. And instead of doing it the right way, the NCAA just opened the floodgates and it's been absolute pandemonium ever since. So this was like the NCAA trying to make up for half a century worth of mistakes with just one swoop. So instead of just turning on the faucet and letting the water run a little bit, they went straight to the ocean. What I mean by this is there seems to be absolutely no structure whatsoever. The NCAA, they broke the glass, they pressed the red button, and all of a sudden guys were getting paid life-changing money. I want to say I am obviously for all the players getting all the bread that they can. A guy like Caleb Williams should be living in a penthouse in LA while playing for USC for everything that he does and brings to that university. But I also believe that there should be structure. And again, this should have been done decades ago so that they could have eased their way into it and this thing could have been done the right way. For example, and I don't have all the answers, maybe the NCAA could have created some sort of pay scale where universities can pay athletes based off how much revenue that sport brings in. Just as a starting point, because I reiterate, just as a way to ease into things, because the NCAA just said, all right, athletes can now monetize their name, image, and likeness, and it was just like throwing meat into the lion's death. Because by doing it this way, the NCAA turned into the exact thing that they were trying to prevent for all these years, which was ultimately ruining the authenticity of the game and programs and universities just willing to throw money at players in order to just buy their best athletes. And I'll double back, but I now want to add that second point. Now combine that with what is now the transfer portal. Because for years before, the NCAA was just worried about programs just buying the best high school recruits at 17 and 18 years old. Before, guys just couldn't get up and transfer whenever they wanted to. So now teams, instead of having to bid for a guy at 17, 18 years old, who you still have to develop and still has to pan out, they can go spend money on a guy who's 20, 21 years old, already developed, already proven, which has done two things to this game. It has incentivized guys who are doing well to leave their situation at one school in hopes that the grass is greener on the other side. And it has diminished the importance of high school recruiting. I repeat again, in some ways I am just playing devil's advocate. I am a guy who benefited tremendously from the early stages of the transfer portal and I am all for guys getting paid. But we just saw former Oklahoma quarterback Dylan Gabriel transfer to Oregon after the Sooners went 10-3 in which he threw for 3,600 yards and 30 touchdowns. I'm sure he did exactly what was best for him and his family, so I'm not knocking him, I'm just using him as an example. You win 10 games and you have an amazing stat line at one of the blue blood powerhouse programs in all of college football. We can speculate all we want, but it's safe to say that he was probably getting paid extremely well. It doesn't get any better than that. We are in a world now where in 2024 in regards to college football, that's still not enough. Take it off of Gabriel, but for whatever reason, we have made it so that these athletes are basing their decisions not off of what is actually the best situation for them, but where they can get the most money from. Because now we can bring it to an even smaller scale of players at the bottom of Power 5 rosters or didn't play Power 5 at all, even looking at FCS and D2 players. This way we can take the money equation out of it and just talk transfer portal, because those guys aren't getting no money anyway. So many times have we seen over the last couple of years of guys enter the portal and have to settle for lesser or in worst case scenarios never get a chance again because the pool of players swapping schools is just so oversaturated. We got guys now leaving at any sign of adversity. Don't play right away, leave. Get your feelings hurt, leave. Another player comes in at your position, leave. The portal is something that is great for athletes because it allows guys to try and find a program that is a better fit for them. Guys make decisions on where they're going to go for the next four to five years at 17, 18 years old. They shouldn't be binded to that, just how coaches can get up and leave for another job whenever they want. But these kids and parents should be educated on the transfer portal and how it should be used. It shouldn't just be used as a scapegoat when things don't go your way. Which brings me full circle back to my point on how the NCAA has become absolutely everything that they tried to prevent. I see why Nick Saban retired. 
Coach was like, yeah, y'all got it. This is no longer the game that I love. I'm gonna take my rings and get up out of here before it gets really scary. It seems like the NCAA has just accepted the fact that it will never be the same. Cause don't even get me started on how dumb all these conference changes are. I may sound like an old dude and I could be 100% wrong, but USC and UCLA are joining the Big 10. What are we talking about? The heart of the Big 12 in Oklahoma and Texas have now joined the SEC. I talked about the facts, but let's talk about the eye test, just what we see within college football. We can simply say that the game itself has been watered down as of lately. What happened to the importance of true rivalry games? What happened to the hype and build up all week when there was a marquee matchup between two powerhouse programs? I'll go as far as to say where are the legends of the game anymore? The last few Heisman winners, tell me who they are and give me their quote unquote Heisman moments. That aura that surrounded college football is no longer. It's what made the game so much different than the NFL and why people love to tune in on Saturdays. The NCAA has just officially shown their true colors. They're no longer trying to hide the fact that they're all about the business side of things. Change is good and innovation is needed in order to progress, but it just seemed like the NCAA was trying to fix every single problem at the exact same time and it's just a cluster of chaos right now. Will they be able to fix some of these problems that they created and give the game back that true college football feel again? Probably not, but we can hope a solution comes to some of these problems before we lose the game that we love for good.